Hey guys, it's Matt here, and in this video, we're going to be going over Windows 10, specifically Windows 10 LTSC. Ah, the good old Windows 10. Released in 2015 by Microsoft, it was the upgrade point between Windows 7 and 8.1 for many users. Windows 8.1 was not well regarded for most people, and it was not something that a lot of people really enjoyed. If you're on a tablet, sure, with its touch-friendly interface, it could have been nice, but it wasn't great. And Windows 10 is what came and tried to fix all these problems while giving Windows that modern spin. It introduced a bunch of extra features, one of which being was the multi-desktop support. That was new in Windows 10. That didn't exist in Windows 8 yet. Not only that, Windows 10, Microsoft aimed to be installed on every PC it was compatible with, and that was the majority of PCs. If you had a computer from around 2005-2006, your PC could run Windows 10, and still can, actually. In most cases, these pretty old PCs can still run the modern versions of Windows 10, especially because Windows 10 had a 32-bit release, the last version of the OS to have that. Now, unfortunately, support for Windows 10 is coming to an end. In October of this year, Microsoft will no longer be providing security updates for Windows 10. So if you're running a consumer release of Windows 10, it's best for you to move over to Windows 11 if you if your PC supports it. Or if it doesn't support it, you can force install it, I guess. Or you can search for other alternatives. But once you lose security updates, while not immediate, eventually your PC will become more and more dangerous as time goes on, as major security exploits are left unpatched. So unfortunately, with the end of Windows 10, in October of this year, soon a lot of people who have old PCs will not be able to run any compatible operating system. Or for people like me who still run their... Or for people like me who have Windows 11 support hardware but choose to run Windows 10, what kind of options do we have at this point? Once October passes, we're not going to get security updates anymore. I guess we'll just have to move on to Windows 11 and deal with Copilot. Dang it. Who put that there? Well, what if I told you that there's a version of Windows 10 that still will get security updates for many years to come? Uh, if only such a thing existed. All right, Windows 10 LTSC. LTSC stands for a long-term service channel. Windows 10 LTSC specifically is a version of Windows that gets security updates far longer than any version of Windows 10 does. But Windows 10 LTSC is more so designed for enterprise and it's designed for specific application uses. So if you have like a computer running, let's just say a restaurant kiosk, or you have a computer with an ATM, or you have something like that, it's going to probably be running LTSC. Windows 10 LTSC is a very stripped down version of Windows, so much so that all of the Metro apps, all the UWP apps, I guess is what it's called nowadays, all of those are not in the operating system. The only app that is in there that's a UWP app is the settings app, and that only makes sense. These versions of Windows will continue receiving updates for far longer than any version of Windows 10 will get, and probably even the last version of Windows 11. We have four versions of Windows 10 LTSC or LTSB that are still receiving updates to this day. You have the 2015 release of LTSB, which is based on Windows 10 1507, I think it's either 1507 or 1511. These are going to be getting updates for 10 years after their release date, so this version of Windows 10 will be receiving updates until the same year, 2025. You've got LTSB 2016, which is based on Windows 10 1607. 1607 is the 2016 release of Windows 10, and naturally 10 years means you'll get updates until 2026. So that's a year later on an old build of Windows 10 that's going to be getting updates for a much longer period of time. You have LTSC 2019, which is based on Windows 10 1809. This is a version of Windows 10 released in 2018, it's the latter half of 2018, and this version of Windows 10 will be receiving updates until 2028. And this is build 1809, as I mentioned earlier, it's a pretty old version of Windows 10. And then finally, you have the latest version of Windows 10 LTSC, 
which is based on 21H2. So this version of Windows 10, there's actually two versions. You've got the Enterprise version and then you have the IoT Enterprise. They're both identical, but the licenses change the duration of your security updates. So if you have the regular version, you get updates for five years, so until 2027. If you have the IoT version, it's the same as the other one, so you get updates for 10 years. You'll be receiving updates until January 2032. I'm sure we'll see people port this update channel over to regular Windows 10 through the registry once it loses support. Right now there's no need to do that because they're still getting updates. Once Windows 10 loses support, which is going to be very soon, some people might jump to that instead. In fact, it's actually what I did. So LTSC is based on the Windows 10 kernel. It's a lot older than what Windows 11 is running on currently, but it's still something that's pretty darn usable. Let's hop over to the PC so you can see what I'm talking about. So here we are at my Windows 10 desktop, and if I go to Winver here real quick, you can see we're running Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC. Now Windows 10 LTSC, as I mentioned, is a very stripped down version of Windows 10. It doesn't look any different right now. In fact, this is my main PC, so a lot of this stuff is already pre-configured. You can see there are very few system apps. You have Windows Security, Windows Backup, Settings, and that is it. There's like almost nothing. Now you do have the older Windows apps, like if I go into here and open Calculator, you have the old Windows 7 equivalent of the application. You've got the Action Center that current Windows 10 still has. A lot of this stuff doesn't work. You have a screen snip here, and even if you take a snip, nothing happens. It does work, it just saves to the clipboard instead. But the nice part is that you continue to receive updates. So if I go into Windows Updates and I have it check, there's probably no updates available right now, so I'm just gonna let this sit. Oh, nope, we do have an update, nice. Now to show that this is just proper Windows 10, you can see if I open the Settings app, for instance, it's just the regular Windows 10 experience. So if I go to Activation, you can see though, this is IoT Enterprise LTSC. So yeah, we do have a proper LTSC experience here. So what features are you missing out on when you run LTSC Windows? Well, you don't have any of the built-in regular apps, but you can use some PowerShell commands to install the Microsoft Store. I have not done that. I will do that in the future if I decide to run some Xbox games. Don't need to do that right now, but in the future, I'm sure I'll need to. Other than that, the system is basically the same as regular Windows 10. If you open up any control panel thing, you can see the Wi-Fi settings, all that stuff is the same. You got your same media controls here. The calendar UI looks identical. Like I mentioned earlier, the Action Center looks the same. So pretty much everything you'd be seeing here works perfectly fine on this version. And all drivers that you'd install on regular Windows 10 work just fine on this version. So you've got that going for you. The Enterprise version of Windows 10 LTSC also has all of the pro features that you would come to expect from Windows 10. If I go to Task Manager, you can see I can have as much memory as I would like, and I think I can actually have more than the professional versions of Windows 10 can. But you can see I've got that much RAM in here, and it works perfectly fine with all of my hardware. I've got AM4, so it works perfectly fine here. But yeah, having a slimmed down operating system with only a few apps, like I said, there's not much to demo here with this OS. So how is Windows 10 LTSC to use as a daily operating system? Well, Windows 10 LTSC, at least for me, just using it as my main computer OS, has been perfectly fine. In fact, it's been really lightweight and nice experience. So with Windows 10 LTSC, it's still a build of Windows 10. So if you have a processor that has performance and efficiency cores, Windows 10 cannot properly take advantage of that. By that I mean, it'll still work. Windows 10 doesn't fully know how to move something between the performance and efficiency cores. Windows 11 has all this stuff built in, but Windows 10 does not. As long as you don't care about that, you can still run Windows 10 on any system perfectly fine. You'll just need to manage your performance and efficiency cores appropriately. LTSC is enabling multiple older computers to continue receiving updates to this day for people who know to take advantage of it. Normally it's not available to consumers, it is designed for the enterprise space, but you can still install it on consumer hardware and it still works perfectly fine. But the nice part is that Windows 10 LTSC will run not only on this PC, but it will run on a lot of older systems as well. The Tollbooth PC I ended up getting that I reviewed in a previous episode, that's got a Core 2 Duo chip in it, and that will also run this version of Windows 10 perfectly fine. Granted, it has very old integrated graphics, so the blur effects that you're seeing here in my start menu 
And if I open like an app and drag it, that's a terrible example. I'll just do this, this is a better example. So apps don't blur behind the taskbar. You can see down here, you've got like a nice blur effect that shows up here. This effect does not exist on machines that does not have uh, DirectX 10 or later because that enabled these blur effects. So systems running DirectX 9, while they can still run this operating system, it won't run it amazingly. So the Tollbooth PC, for instance, will not have any of these transparency effects. The taskbar will be clear, but it will not be blurry. The start menu and the action center will be completely opaque, so they won't have any of those blur effects, but it will still run on the systems, and it will actually still run just fine. You'll still get all the security updates. You're just gonna lose out on some of those visual features, but it's nothing that I would say is the end of the world. With that being said, when I suggest you go and install Windows 10 LTSC on your own computer, well, at that point, I would say that's up to you. But one thing I would suggest is do not install this on someone else's computer if they are not fully sure what they are doing. This is an enterprise release of Windows 10, and while most stuff will continue to work, app support may very well not be supported by the time this version is at end of support. So a great example of this is when Windows 7 lost uh, support and got an extended security for three years. Apps even still did not support Windows 7 directly, even though they still had variants of the OS that still got updates, such as the uh, extended update program where you could get it for three years. App developers still just didn't support stuff. And a great example of this is actually with what we're dealing with now, with Windows Server uh, 2012 R1 and R2. These have extended security update programs until 2026. So because of that, it can still be safely used on server equipment. However, app developers have already killed Windows 8. Firefox no longer runs on Windows 8. Google Chrome doesn't run on Windows 8. Such so as anything in the Microsoft Store requires basically Windows 10. And even if you're running Windows 8 and you can download an app from the 8 version, the Windows 8 Store is dead and no longer is functional. So you cannot install any apps on Windows 8, at least with, not without sideloading them. And besides, if you install this OS on your computer, you cannot just upgrade to Windows 11. You cannot upgrade from an LTSC release to just a regular Pro or Home release of Windows. But the big issue when it comes to that is installing this version of Windows would basically guarantee that you are locked onto the LTSC channel. Now for me, I have accepted that. I prefer LTSC anyways because of its lightweight and its faster UI and it's just it's more responsive, all that stuff. I chose that. If you put this on like a friend's computer or something like that, you very well could have problems. So I would suggest that you don't do that on someone else's hardware. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up what I'm talking about over here. Let's hop on over back to me on the chair. So yeah, with Windows 10 LTSC, it's pretty cool that it exists. It's pretty cool that we still have options for these older PCs running Windows because Windows 10 supports a wide variety of systems going up from Pentium 4s to modern day. And Pentium 4s were released a long time ago. You can get Windows 10 support on like PCs as far back as like 2003. But these machines uh, running Windows 10, we're gonna be losing a lot of machines and a lot of people aren't gonna do this and install this this special version of 10, especially because you lose out on the Microsoft Store, you can install it again, but you lose out on that by default. You don't have the Xbox ecosystem, so using it for Xbox games is difficult until you install everything. Otherwise, it's a pretty cool option for people who still need to run Windows 10, especially because we've got a few pieces of hardware that don't actually run Windows 11 at all. With the release of 24H2 Windows 11, they changed a lot in the back end of the kernel and killed support for many older CPUs. Now, Windows 11 requires 8th gen CPUs or later or 2nd gen Ryzen and the certain AMD's side, but if you decide to install it unofficially, back then you could do that. Um, with 21H2, 22H2, 23H2, um, you could install that as far back as any machine that could run 10. So you could install this on 1st through 7th gen Intel. Any 1st gen Ryzen, pre-Ryzen, any of those systems, these systems could all run Windows 11 on a supported. The Core 2 Duo systems, Core 2 Quads, all that stuff like that. You have the older Cedar Mill Pentium 4s. There were some other models that could also run it as well. These machines could also run Windows 11 unofficially. Once they started adding more stuff to the kernel with 24H2, they actually killed support for many older CPUs. If you try to boot 24H2 on Cedar Mill Pentium 4s or on Core 2 Duo chips, 
the system will just crash. If you try cheating your way through it using DISM and the command prompt with a Windows 11 WIM, or using another computer to install onto its hard drive and then putting it in the other system, when it tries to boot, it will also just crash because it's missing instruction sets. Windows 11 requires SSC 4.2, whereas older versions of Windows 11, 23H2 and older, and Windows 10 require SSC 2. They don't require that much. Now, Core 2 Duos, Pentium 4s, those things are ancient anyways. They would be much better off running older operating systems, so long as you don't connect them to the internet, or at least if you are going to connect them to the internet, please be careful, don't do anything sensitive on them. But one thing that would help with these like CDMR Pentium 4s, Core 2 systems, all that stuff, um, is running LTSC Windows 10, because those will get security updates until 2032. And this also isn't counting 32-bit systems, since this version of Windows 10 supports 32-bit chips. So you can use Pentium M's, you can use Core Duos, all those kinds of older chips. You got the VIA chipsets, some of those will do it, some older AMD chips as well. So yeah, that's about it for this video. Um, for those of you running Windows 10 LTSC, or just Windows 10 in general, what do you guys think of the operating system? For me personally, I like Windows 10 better than 11. There are pros and cons to both, but I think Windows 10 still is a really nice operating system for Windows anyways. And yeah, new setup. Uh, got a new couch over here, got all this stuff here, got a tripod up here that's mounted up so I can actually have like a more properly like lax setup. That's kind of the thing, that's kind of the vibe I wanted to give off and I finally can do it. And it's kind of exciting to be able to do that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you all later. Bye guys.